Welcome everybody. I'm going to walk through how I test fit parts in a 3D environment. Uh, last couple of days I've had quite a few people ask me how I design my aircraft. They want me to do a deep dive into how I do it and that would take hundreds of hours. But <clears throat> one of the questions that come up the most is how do I take a 2D drawing, bring it into Fusion 360, and do test assembly of the aircraft. So I'm gonna do a very crude, real quick drawing just for some of you that have just downloaded Fusion 360 to understand how to do this. So what I'm gonna do is I've got my AutoCAD open right now, and this is a rib to my T28 I designed. And I'm going to make a copy and bring two ribs into my Fusion 360 to show you what I'm gonna do here. So let me make sure I save it. You have to save this as a DXF, people, okay? Fusion will only bring, uh, as far as I know, DXFs in. So right here, I'm gonna hit Insert, and I'm gonna hit DXF. But before I do that, I need to verify something. What did I draw my AutoCAD in? If I drew my AutoCAD in inches, you wanna come over here, see where it says millimeter? You wanna click this little guy right here, and over here to the right, you want to pick inches. That's the biggest mistake people made. I almost did it just now because I'm so used to drawing in millimeters. I hate drawing in fractions if I'm doing parts and pieces, like designing mechanical things. I just love to use millimeter. So now I'm set in inches here. I'm gonna go up here, hit insert, DXF. Click this little file here to the right. I'm gonna pick rib number three, hit open. Now I gotta pick an axis or a plane, I mean, I wanna draw it in. I'm gonna pick this plane right here, and then you're gonna notice there's my two ribs. Now, re-verify here, it says inches, hit okay. Now, one thing that drives me nuts is when you draw in a AutoCAD 3D environment, I mean 2D environment, you don't know exactly where the center of the space is all the time. At least I, by the time I'm done with the drawing, I've moved everything all over the place. So if you noticed when I first, hang on, let me show you in this one. Here you see a green and a red line crossing each other. That's the center of your model space when you're drawing in 3D. That doesn't exist here. So what I'm gonna do now is move this to the center of my space so at least I've got a place that I'm working at. And if I remember right, it's gonna be way over here because I drew these ribs way out of the center of my world. There's the red line. Now I'm gonna move this down here to the green line. Zoom in now. Okay, and I am almost there. There we go. It doesn't hurt to look at it from the side for a minute and uh, see if you're on the correct plane you should be because you picked one, okay? So now I'm in that correct plane, gonna hit okay. Now, if I want to make this an eighth inch rib, I'm just gonna click it, gonna hit Q, which is extrude, hit .125, and now that's an eighth inch rib. Now you notice the other one disappeared. You gotta go over here to sketches and turn your sketches back on. Now, normally what I would do here is go up here where it says saved, I would right click it and hit new component. Okay, this will be a, a, let's say rib number two. Okay, I'm gonna name this. I should have named the other one rib number one. Um, okay, now I can click that, hit Q, hit .125, and now I've got both ribs drawn. I'm gonna go ahead and turn my sketches back off, and I'm gonna hit uh, move, click on this. I can grab this little wheel thing here, Rotate it to 90, hit OK. Gonna go to this rib, right click, hit move. You wanna make sure it says bodies over here too, because I just clicked the face and it picked the face. So make sure it says bodies over there, okay? Up here, hit OK. And now I've got two ribs drawn. Now, you can look at them like this and say, wait a minute, those aren't on the right axis. So uh, you can hit move and you can drag it down and you can line it up pretty slick. And if it doesn't line up exactly, you can keep zooming in until you do line it and get it exact. Now, 
I don't import spars. I draw spars in this environment, okay? Um, now, this was a very crude rib I did too, everybody. This rib doesn't have a lot of parts, but if I was gonna dr uh, draw a spar, I'd right click, hit new component. I would name it a spar, okay? On this first rib here, I'd right click and I would hit create an offset plane. That's gonna create something for me to draw off of, okay? So now I'm gonna right click that and hit create sketch. So now I can go in here and I'm gonna draw me a spar. And if I was gonna do this exact, everybody, I would do it, um, you know, I would put in my 0.5 and hit tab, hit in my 0.5. And now that spar is the right size. It's not lined up perfect, but that's fine. I'm gonna hit Q because I wanna extrude it. Okay, and my, I'm gonna go out 20 inches. And that's how I start drawing spars. <clears throat> if you come back up here and click this little doohickey here, everything is lit up. This is how you pick your, well, I'm not going to get into how Fusion 360. There's a guy named Lars on YouTube. If you want to learn to draw 360, go look up Lars Christensen, I think is his name. And I basically learned in three weeks how to use three, Fusion 360 by following Lars. Now, what do you get? when you bring in your airplane and decide to assemble it completely in 3D, you get this. And just so you know, short of gluing, it takes just about as long to build it here as it does <laughs> in real life. You could have 40 hours assembling this in a 3D environment, everybody, uh, to just make it all fit right and uh, make sure you're doing it right. But the beautiful thing is, is like, you know, I put in my Robar air tanks here, uh, if you went to kit cutters and had them cut this out, um, as long as it all fits here, you're going to have an airplane that's going to work. Uh, I will do a video on how I pick the sizes of wood for the structures and strength. Most of the time, it's it's hard to overbuild an airplane unless you're going to get stupid heavy with it, uh, which we all get stupid heavy with our airplanes. But this is basically what you're going to do if you bring in all your parts into a 3D environment and assemble it. You will know if everything fits. And um, if you want to go mad, you can look at all the different meshes that I brought in. Now, I brought this in a little bit differently. I brought this in, well, no, I brought this in all as DXF, but it was already DXF um, 3D components that I'd already exported out of Fusion. So, um, because somebody wanted to know if they could have this in uh, Fusion 360 files, so I made it a lot easier for them. So, I hope this short video helps everybody. The most important things to remember, people, is make sure this is closed. If you do not have this watertight, it will not be extrudable, okay? If you want your building tabs to show up in your 3D world, just close this. See, I left this open, okay? If you want to close that, um, I'm not sure why it's not closing. Oh, well, I'm not going to go into that right now. I got something turned on or off. Now, look, I've never had a day of official education in CAD or three, uh, 360. I taught myself everything or I watch YouTube videos. And if you look at my results, I would say I'm doing pretty kick-ass. So uh, thanks for watching my videos, everybody. Um, I'm going to try to get more of these de design videos done. And I hope it helps everybody. And uh, have a rocking day and be safe. Rock on, everybody. Bye-bye.